Hello, welcome or welcome back. I'm Farrister and for this video I'll be sharing a little information about getting Star Citizen set up, including what hardware you might want and what to map in the pit. I've included timestamps in the video description which may help you to navigate to the part of the video that you're interested in. Alternatively, feel free to watch it all if you like. Hardware, the HOTAS. I've heard this pronounced different ways. I'm opting for HOTAS as it's least likely to get me in trouble with human resources. HOTAS stands for Hands-On Throttle and Stick and is most similar to the setup you might find in a fighter aircraft today. This type of setup includes typically a throttle and joystick, with the joystick either centre mounted or on the right hand side, sometimes called side stick. On both are a range of buttons and switches, the HOTAS concept being that all of the critical flight functions that you need are at your fingertips without having to take your hands off those controls. You can find hardware for this at pretty much every price point. When I started out with Star Citizen, I had a very cheap stick before upgrading to a SciTech X55 and moving on to what I'm using now, which is a Thrustmaster Warthog throttle and F18 grip. Given that Star Citizen doesn't require the most precise movements at the moment, I'd say this is down to preference and whether you'd be using the extra hardware for any other sims. Some sticks come with a twist which is useful for the extra axis. Alternatively, some pilots opt for rudder pedals to do this job with their feet. Again, because I fly a lot of DCS World Flight Sim, I have actual rudder pedals, but I'd not say that's a requirement for Star Citizen. A hardware dual stick. So the other alternative to a traditional HOTAS is a dual stick or two joysticks. This offers a particularly fresh option for a 6 degrees of freedom sim like Star Citizen by adding an additional axis to the throttle. Actually, some of the Star Citizen ship modules have dual sticks as part of their in-game model. My honest view here is it depends on budget and whether you'd like to branch out into other sims. Dual sticks is a really good option for Star Citizen but would be much tougher to use in precision flight sims. You'd also want to look at not saving too much money on the purchase price of the stick, particularly the throttle stick, in order to maintain a reasonable amount of control over the throttle. Hardware. Head tracking. Head tracking is useful for Star Citizen, as it means you can have a better awareness of what's happening around you. This helps when performing manoeuvres that benefit from spatial awareness, such as takeoff or landing, but also helps with immersion into the game. It's a pretty cool feeling to be flying past a building and be able to look across at it whilst you fly past. There are lots of head tracking options out there. Personally, I use Track IR, but there's also Open Track as well as virtual reality solutions. I wouldn't say it's a necessity by any stretch for Star Citizen, but if you're particularly interested in flying and excited for that part of Squadron 42, I'd certainly say it's worth considering. With a little do-it-yourself attitude, it's possible to build an open track system for within $20. As well as head tracking, Star Citizen takes this to the next level with a feature called Base Tracking. This maps your face to what your avatar does in-game on a like-for-like -like basis. Hardware-wise, this needs a webcam with 60 frames per second, at least 640 by 480 resolution, and MJPEG compatible. Sadly, it does get defeated by moustaches, so I suggest giving that facial hair a trim. Hardware. Other inputs. There are also other inputs that people use with Star Citizen. I know I'm not going to name them all here, but for example, this might be a stream deck, keypads, and typically they're used for support functions or as an extra set of switches for semi-common binds, such as switching the lights on or opening all the doors. Control setup, flight. 
So, starting in the uh, controls customization, selecting the joystick and HOTAS, we'll start with flight movement. Key things to bind here are pitch, which I have bound to an axis, that's up and down. Yaw, again I have that bound to an axis, that's moving the nose left and right. And roll, again I have that bound to an axis, that is moving each wing up or down. Some of these you uh, you might not need depending on the number of buttons you've got. I would definitely map space break, speed limiter increase and decrease. Have each of those as a single push button. Toggling decouple mode on and off, and then strafing up, down, left and right. I have each of those set to a button. Throttle forward, which I have set to an axis. Throttle back, which I have actually just set to a button. Afterburner. And there are some of these that will be helpful if you've got the buttons for them. So, for example, the landing system, VTOL, quantum travel system, and quantum drive are all useful if you've got enough buttons for them. The one thing that I would just say on the throttle axis, if you're using a traditional HOTAS setup like I am, just hop into the controls menu, select the correct HOTAS along the bottom right, and just make sure that your flight inversion settings for strafe forward are set as you would like them. Also in the setup, I'll set up for targeting. So in the flight targeting, Again, it depends on how many buttons you've got here. I would certainly have select target under reticle bound to a button, as well as target nearest hostile. For those of you that are into mining, I would definitely have scanning radar ping and scanning mode toggle switches there as well. Additionally, in the weapons group, I would certainly bind fire weapon group one Acquire Missile Lock, toggle the Gimbal Assist modes, and launching the missile. And finally, for setup for flight in Defensive, I would have a Launch Countermeasure and Cycle Countermeasure type setup and bound. If you found this guide useful, please subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other Star Citizen videos, such as ship reviews. If there's anything I've missed or that you'd like to know, let me know in the comments. And for anybody looking for a group who plays the current patch of Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll hear from me in the next video.